Phenomenology Continues, this being part three, subtitled, What Happens? I have been talking again and again about consequences, but even those are a subset of a more general idea of change. And it's intimately tied to the vividness that I was talking about. We can talk about the increasing vividness of something that's static and known, which is possible, but we can also talk about the unique vividness and its improvement, its increase, its intensification, simply because something changes. And looking at role-playing as an activity, I think it's one of the most important things simply to be attentive to of given what our work talking about, given what's being imagined and what more importantly is being spoken of and heard and repurposed as we go along, what of the content is changing and how is that in and of itself a crucial piece of the question Am I glad I did this? Am I glad I'm doing it? And this is where I like to talk about system or systematic approach toward play. Because if the procedures and interactions and input and uptake and return that we're practicing, the logistics of mechanics and all of these things, if those really aren't contributing to the changes that are deemed important, the things that we expect one another to pay attention to, if they are pro forma, if they are inconsequential when reflected upon, then play has a disconnected quality in which the credibility or responsibility of the outcomes and their narration is being kicked to a person or persons in a fashion that does not really have to respect all of these efforts and investments and statements that people have made along the way. And instead, now we have kicked things actually more to that other kind of authorship that I was talking about, where the authorship is invisible and isolated and individualized and separated from those who are enjoying it. And all of their effort, all of their sound and fury toward consequence has only been thrown into that person's hopper so that they can sift it and undergo it and use it as kind of their raw material for then their fully authoritative lying down of laying down of what is occurring and has occurred and what it means. So under these circumstances, we have uh, shall we say, a uh, fake kind of play experience at work. A fake kind of play experience in which a lot of effort is being made and a lot of statements are being made and attention is being paid to them and uptake. But really, the translation of that effort from the micro into the macro outcomes in the situation, in the scene, and toward the play fiction in general is not really very strong. So I want to focus on the kinds of consequences that can occur, keeping in mind that what I was just talking about is a failure state. And now we're going to say, well, we're not in that failure state. We are going to look at a circumstance in which a given statement and the given use of the instrumentation and a given uh, apportioning of the different ways to speak and about what is all very respectful and utilizes all those things and we end up in consequences that have occurred due to what has been said and what has been done. Well, the most obvious is the grim stuff. You know, we've got damage, we've got death, we've got destruction of things, we've got the loss of resources. We have, for example, a character perhaps subtracted out of play due to these things. There's some really interesting historical phenomena that we could delve into. The notion that your character is the one thing you've got in play and that the loss of that character in fictional terms literally boots you out of play. You're out. Those kinds of things. Um, the modulation and 
manipulation of dynamics of that kind, the procedures of that kind, becomes its own power struggle within play. Let's recognize that historically this developed in the design of these games in a kind of haphazard and almost mutation-oriented way of which this is not a problem. This is nothing wrong or bad that this has occurred, but only that ways to play that people may consider to be fixed or essential or intrinsic to the activity may not actually be that intrinsic and simply represent the effort and attention that have occurred towards certain ways to do it. So due to the contingent details of how the negative impact on entities in the fiction has been handled, historically there's a certain aversiveness toward this or to play in a way that makes this less likely or to consider it a failure state of play, for example, to have a character die or something like that. Again, treat that as a historical contingency, perhaps a welcome one in one's way to play. One's used to that contingency and says, hey, you know what, this has a lot of tension. I like the intensity that it brings to play. That's fine too as options. We can also take a look at the flip side of the consequences, which sometimes are extremely concrete, thinking of them as improvement, sometimes it's called advancement, the idea that some entity in play by which you have an impact on play is enhanced. You, The scale of your character's operation upon the fiction is enhanced resources that they may bring to play or into the situations are increased or uh, their statistical impact, potential impact on things that I referred to earlier is higher. All of these things are fairly uh, familiar to practitioners of this activity. Um, what's kind of interesting is that sometimes they are hooked in very tightly to what exactly occurred. You do not go up in your skill to do something unless you have used it successfully in some way, all sorts of procedures, or it may be very disconnected. The notion that we're using an abstract counter of your participation, and when you hit to a certain tick mark, then these things happen, and these improvements occur, and the direct connection to events in the fiction is a lot more tenuous. All sorts of things like that can be the case. Uh, we can have highly hooked in consequence, we can have a more abstract sense of this enhanced presence in play. It may not even be a matter of increased agency in play. There's a, Historically there's been a link between how effective and how consequential your character is in play that's actually connected with your ability to have more agency among us as a person at the table, those two things can perhaps be unhitched as a matter of game design as well, or they could be left together hitched very tightly insofar as that's a way that a given design works uh, in a successful fashion. So all of these though are very important, these consequences, the potentially negative ones at the level within the fiction itself and the potentially positive ones in the fiction itself. The interesting thing for game design is what do we mean by positive and negative in terms of our experience? And also whether an emotional up or down is in and of itself a bad thing. Valuing the sort of body blow that you may take emotionally when this happens in the fiction, that can be strong. Other kinds of designs can actually want to soften that and say, well, actually, let's just play more with a sense of, well, whatever happens, it's good, and continue and sort of revel in the fact that anything could happen. Well, lots of different ways to do it. But they're not trivial. And in many ways, thinking of play as... <laughs> In some games, you might put it as play is the way that a character sheet makes another character sheet. And to look at it that way, you might say, huh, maybe all those things like my skill with an axe and all these options that I chose in character creation and the nature of what got thrown at us during the course of play, maybe all of those things are literally subroutines of that simple statement. 
we could also talk about fictional change that is not directly just the capabilities or the presence, life or death of a character, but also about the situation that they are finding themselves in. If they tried to save the kingdom, well, was the kingdom saved? Thinking about those larger external changes as subjects to play itself and not simply to be imposed in a relatively external fashion by one person, that's actually pretty strong too and perhaps has been underutilized through the course of the history. There is a particular sort of these changes which perhaps encounters the same kind of failure of vocabulary that the use of words like game and story encounter. Endings. Just how does ending apply to this weird blend of author and audience? From the fictional standpoint, we can talk about what I guess today are called arcs, in which a particular set of engaged upon and transient conflict undergoes its consequential outcome in and of itself. So we could talk about endings in terms of the ending of an arc, whether it's for a person or whether it's a set of circumstances or things like that. We can also talk about endings of play itself. We're done. We have finished playing this time with this group of people and it's over. The very same group of people may meet and play again or they may not, but a number of set of fictional variables, a number of set of the concept of a unit of the activity is now over. Well, then we can subdivide each of those. We can subdivide arcs. We can say, well, we played for four hours tonight. And of course we got this set of things that occurred. And wow, the, the rising action on this arc is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm juiced, I'm, I'm engaged in this. Or one can say, we, are, we have played, but we are not done. All of those things, I mean, you could say, well, this arc is over and we are not done. Part of the way we play is to bounce it into some new kind of arc situation. I don't know. The vocabulary is very dicey. What is a session of play? What is a fictional unit of play? What is a unit of play in terms of finishing up as a group with this thing? All of those really bear reflection and observation through a wide variety of people playing a wide variety of games, even to see what kind of patterns and relationships they may have. It's been a bit of a curious taboo historically, the notion of even talking about, well, this group might be done, and can make people uncomfortable. Another issue, as I mentioned before, is that the death of a character or the conclusion of wanting to play this character, those also have had this aversive quality for a number of reasons. I'd like to kind of relax all those aversions. I'd like to separate a little bit from the historical or habitual ways to play and open it up a little bit and say, why don't we regard this notion of endings of either fictional phenomena or of our playing as such, open it up into more diverse approaches.